Dear friends, thank you for supporting this channel on Patreon to join our growing family of donors, now 59 patrons strong. And remember, once we reach 100 active patrons, we will start sending out a one ounce U.S. Silver Eagle, autographed by your host, Donegan Kaiser, to one active supporter each and every month. Thanks for taking a minute to pitch in by going to patreon.com slash Reluctant Preppers and pledging your support today. Thanks very much. Hey, Reluctant Preppers. This is showing you just how easy it is to purchase silver without paying any premium over spot price. You just go to sdbullion.com slash rp, scroll down and enter the special code to get silver without any premium, and they'll mail it to your mailbox, discreetly packaged, Inside you'll find a beautiful 10 ounce bar of fine silver and you are able to purchase that and have it and add it to your stack and your collection without paying any premium. And you're supporting reluctant preppers along the way. Thanks. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. We're delighted to have this distinguished returning guest, David Morgan, also known as the Silver Guru and the founder of TheMorganReport.com, is here with us again, once again, on Reluctant Preppers. David, thank you for joining us. Oh, well, thank you. We've been following uh, some of your writings recently about what people need to do who've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this uh, wealth transfer that we've been told to expect to those who keep the faith and hold on to physical gold and silver in the midst of a world gone mad where the, the value, the pricing, current spot pricing of gold and silver have been evidently uh, artificially low for a long time down near the cost of production some would argue lower, and uh, yet we see bubbles all over the place in other markets, uh, even though we've seen some volatility recently in stocks and bonds and cryptocurrencies. Can you talk to us first a little bit about the markets themselves, what you're seeing, and then we can circle back to that question about what people should be doing who are waiting in line for that wealth transfer for those who are holding on to physical precious metals? Well, as we talked about, I think, on the last interview, perhaps one before that, is I've definitely seen a shift in the markets, meaning that we probably peaked in the stock market and the bond market. And gold has held up relatively well, silver not so much, but regardless, <clears throat> the markets are in a fundamental long-term change, which means that you know, stock market, overall equity markets worldwide are probably on a downtrend, and metals, particularly gold, are an uptrend initially. So that's the most important part of the story because the old adage, the trend is your friend. If you have a massive, you know, 10 year trend, uh, you want to be on that trend. And that was basically what happened in gold from 2000 to 2011. It was a 10 or 11 year bull market. People forget that. Now we've had about a five or six year old year bear market within, I think, a secular bull market. And that's ending. In fact, that actually ended, I think, the end of 2015. But the market's basically gone sideways. So the other thing I think is important to point out is that my basic premise has always been to have a hedge position, which means, you know, 10 or 20 percent in the metals. And that could be like 10 percent in physical, 10 percent in the mining equities, well chosen or whatever. But the point I've always stressed and seldom get feedback from the disgruntled trolls is that, you know, I bought silver or I bought gold or whatever because of so-and-so or such-and-such or this article, but they never really stop to consider the bigger picture, which is how does that fit within your lifestyle, your income level, your investing ability, and what you really think the ongoing structure of the financial system is going to look like. <clears throat> so in other words, you don't need 100% in the gold market to you know, be protected. In fact, you're really less protected in that way, and you're losing a lot of uh, potential investments that can do quite well. So to be balanced is what I've stressed, and a balanced portfolio requires about 20% devoted to the precious metals. As uh, people have been devoted uh, advocates <clears throat> of holding on to at least ensuring some of their um, 
wealth and some of their net worth by holding physical precious metals in the face of increasing risk in the, in the equity markets. For them, there's that ongoing value of insurance or protection, but there's also a desire to participate in some uh, growth. And uh, recently you've been writing about opportunities to do that. If you could give us at least indications sure. on where they can learn more. Yeah, I'll be happy to do that. I will not, hopefully I won't forget the question, but if you go back to one of my earliest mentors and the guy that really had, I think, a, a great grasp of not only the financial markets, but life in general, Harry Brown, and he started a fund called the Permanent Portfolio. In that portfolio, as much as he disliked debt, he said to have a balanced portfolio, you need, and I forget the exact percentages, but 30% bonds, 25% equities, 10% metals, uh, real estate investment trust type of thing, cash. And all you did with the permanent portfolio was you balanced it once a year. So you looked at all the asset classes, and let's say silver was in one of the booming years, which we had, uh, you know, early on from 19, uh, oh, let's see, excuse me, from 2003 to 2011. So one of those really massive up moves for silver. You would look at the end of the year, and so you would have, you know, 10% to metals, 30% to bonds, 25 to this stock. So you would see what the ratios were at the end of the year. And let's say that the metals were up to 25% of your total portfolio, and that equities didn't change, and bonds were down to 20% or whatever. What you would do is rebalance the end of the year. You would sell off the metals until it made up 10% of your portfolio. You would take the winnings from the metals and move it into the bond market that had underperformed for that year. Very simple, very elegant, very balanced portfolio for inflation, deflation, just about anything could happen in the market. So having said that, my premise has always been you got to hold it. You got to If you own it, you can hold it. And once that's accomplished, for people that are willing to take more risk, there's a way to generate income through any asset class. You can do it in gold and silver, and you can basically beat the bankers doing it because you're smaller and more nimble, which is by doing something that has about an 85% probability of winning all the time. It's like being the house in the casino. What that means is that you're an options call writer. You sell options. Option writers make the money option buyers, generally speaking, are losers. So similar to the um, junior mining equity space, there's always that person or two or three or whatever that bought XYZ mining at five cents and went to 50 bucks. And you hear those stories all the time. And some of them are true, but most of them are not. And so a call buyer, someone that bought, you know, a, an option or 10 options on a company and the, and the stock performed as expected, and you leverage that up move in the, in the stock, and you gain substantially. That does happen, but it's very rare. The people that make most money are the house, and the house is the one that sells that option. So it's basically a way to sell options on your gold and silver holdings without having to put it up physically. You can do it synthetically. And again, this isn't for everybody. These are for people that understand uh, markets, and they're fairly sophisticated. They're willing to uh, put the odds in their favor, and they like to generate income on something that they hold physically without having to put it up for risk. Uh, the methodology is very simple to use, but the timing is everything. And that's why having someone basically, excuse the expression, hold your hand and actually show you exactly when to sell the option is a great advantage over what most people do. Most people can understand the, the idea quite easily, but they get anxious. And if you have somebody basically guiding you and say, yeah, it looks really good, you'd make good money on this option, selling it to someone now. However, if you're a little more patient, the market is probably gonna move more in our favor. And let's just be patient here. And if you have a little coaching like that, it can go a long way, especially if you're looking at one to two percent a month, which is what this program usually performs at, do you like regardless of the um, timing, is there is there a chance that your physical silver would get, or that you're putting up, uh, that you're selling writing calls against could get called away from you? It's very unlikely. Is, is it possible? This is how you structure it. I mean, what we teach is no, you don't put it up. But you know, some people can't live without living on the edge, which means that, you know, they leverage to the, the hill, just like the banking system, which is ill-advised. 
And there's usually a consultation call that takes place beforehand, kind of put it in the right, again, overused word by me, balance. You want to balance your portfolio. You want it to add less stress and more income. That's what you're striving for. So we have a chat at the beginning to find out, you know, what your sophistication level is, what your understanding of markets is, if this is correct or not for you, and know what your expectations are. And of course, could it be called away? The answer is not really. I mean, it's all synthetic. In the worst case, if a trade goes against you, uh, like any trade, as long as you're nimble enough and have set a stop, you're going to stop out your loss at a certain level. And even if uh, in a very unlikely scenario, but it does happen, and I think I should voice it, that the uh, options market jumps your trade, in other words, it jumps your stop, and that happens rarely, but it has happened, then you've got to go to a market order. And as long as your broker knows that, you can get out and basically protect yourself. But these markets move in ways that are predictable most of the time, but not all of the time. And in the case where it would be a runaway market to the upside, you'd be long anyway, two ways. You'd be uh, having sold a put, which puts money in your pocket, expecting the price to go up and have physical long that you own outright. So it would be kind of the best of both worlds. As you've been yes. talking uh, at various yeah. conferences, I know recently, I believe you were at attending the Anarchapoco conference in, in Mexico. Is that correct? Um, correct. Any new themes that you see emerging? And specifically, if you could touch on the crypto space and, and the intersection between crypto and physical and the load project that you've been working on over the past couple of years. This is my opinion, and I want everyone to know, just looking in the camera's eye here, that uh, I'm not an expert on crypto, although I've certainly spent some time looking at it. And the flavor that I caught at the Anarchapoco conference is that many of the people there were there because they have made so much money in crypto. And Jeff uh, Berwick, that writes The Dollar Vigilante, along with Ed Bugros, is very good at what they do. And I was kind of pleased to find out that they only allocated about 5% of their overall portfolio to cryptocurrencies. But again, going back to the Harry Brown portfolio model, I mean, these things have just ripped it. They've done so well. Uh, over the last year. So I think there's starting to be a consolidation in the market. A lot of these, let's say, poor excuses for an actual asset are falling away and going bye-bye. On top of that, I think you're seeing what I consider to be, and this is my personal opinion, the next leg up will probably be led by cryptocurrencies let me restate that. I don't think it'll be led by cryptocurrencies that are asset backed by gold and silver, but I do think that will be the class of cryptocurrencies that are the most trusted within the set of cryptocurrencies. The subset of gold and silver backed cryptocurrencies will probably gain the most momentum in the next up leg, or let me say, not the best price appreciation because it'll be tied to gold and silver, but the most sought after because. There is a problem with cryptocurrencies in some cases, in a lot of cases, and that's trust. But everyone trusts gold and silver. With a the crypto, there's a trust issue as well with the gold and silver one, and that is, does XYZ crypto really own the gold? Does it really own the silver? Does it have what it says it has? And that's always an issue. With the blockchain, the camera system, the way things can be verified, a lot of that uh, concern can be put to rest. And, and the, load pro the load project, you asked, I'm sorry. And that's a program that was started by some Canadian friends of mine. And they are starting it out. There is no white paper yet. It's a high risk, high reward. And the way you enter the, their relationship is through pledging silver. So whatever amount you pledge, you're at risk. It says right in the paperwork. And when you sign it, it says you could lose up to 15%. So if you put in a 100-ounce bar, for an example, you could lose you know, uh, 15 um, ounces and come back with 85. I don't think that will happen. The advantage of funding the program with silver is as this process develops and it really goes into cyberspace and people start using these AGX coins, then as the system continues, you are paid in physical silver. So if you're one of the founders, one of the people that commits silver to the program, then you will be rewarded with physical silver. So uh, there is an upside to it as well. It's too hard to explain. I did a mastermind with uh, one of the founders of the program 
but they have a website. All you need to do is go to uh, the secure site, which is HTTPS colon backslash black backslash AG for silver AG decimal load L O D E dot O N E. So it's AG dot L O D E dot O N E. And you will get right to using the cryptocurrency silver money project. And it's quite a fascinating read. I suggest everybody get involved with reading the whole website before you make any commitment. I'm not saying that anyone should commit, but I think you should be aware of it, especially anyone that's followed the precious metals over the last, let's say, five years. Bought it at 30 and is really disgusted with it. And they have some silver they might be willing to risk to get a return on. We also wanted to follow up with you. We, t we spoke with the uh, head of EnviroLeach recently, which is another company that's doing some pretty interesting and advanced work, uh, fairly unique work in uh, non-toxic uh, methods for reclaiming uh, silver from the w and gold, sorry, gold from the waste stream. And uh, any insights that you have from uh, in the last uh, quarter or so from any of the research that you've done with, with that company on, on their next steps and their, what their current status is in their projects? Well, the current status is we're waiting for the uh, pilot plant that's being put together as we speak to produce something for public information. I'm not allowed to speak of anything that is in the public domain. I will say in a general way that everything is going pretty much as expected, which means these things usually project uh, faster timelines than, is, than actually take place. So when you go from a lab environment and you've got a pilot plant at a very small scale and you prove the concept over and over and over again, when you scale that up, you can scale it up perfectly and everything is the same except the size changes and which means that the coupling that you could get off the shelf for the pilot plant you can't get off the shelf for the the next stage up this <clears throat> this demonstration plan i'll call it so you've got to get it retrofitted or make it make the part yourself things like this this is normal activity in any business i don't care what business you're in there's always these glitches these unforeseen things and it's just a development issue it takes time but it can be done and so that's kind of where we're at right now. I do expect that uh, our main company will come up with a public uh, statement for the uh, press release circuit, <clears throat> probably within the next month or perhaps less. I'm very pleased. And you were right, actually, what you said. It precipitates out more than just gold. But again, there the circuit, like any circuit in precious metals, has to be kind of tweaked for what you're doing. I mean, in conventional circuitry, depending on what you're mining and what the ore looks like. I mean, you might run a separate circuit to, let's say, get the copper out before you put that, what leaches out, leaching out the copper, so I'm not being articulate, <clears throat> so the copper leaches out, and then what remains of that material flows through another circuit and leaches out the gold. I mean, that's sometimes how it's done, not in every case. In this case, we wouldn't have to be two circuits, but it does have to, it has to do with the chemistry of the reagent is what it has to do with. So those are not a one size fits all. Every time we precipitate e-waste, it's always this formula. It depends if you're precipitating out printed circuit boards or ram fingers or cell phones or whatever the, the start material is, there is a difference. For people who want to find out more of your work, David, and how they can get plugged in and get the insider's view, because by the time we can talk about this stuff publicly, you've been working on it for months and months ahead of the years. years. I was, yeah. I was too, well, not always, but most of the time months. And, but in this case, I watched this company for two years before I ever put any, you know, any writing to the Morgan Report, because these smaller micro cap companies are very, very difficult. I mean, just to digress a bit, but there's this, uh, I'll call him a competitor. I know who he is. He's a good guy, but they have the secret gold mine in Idaho. Well, I live about an hour and a half drive from the Silver Valley. It's not a gold mine, and it's not a secret. It's a lead mine, you know, but they write this ad copy about the secret gold mine in Idaho. You know, these people get, you know, 10 times the subscribers that I get, but I just won't write ad copy like that that's basically – so enticing that you feel like if you don't buy a subscription, you're going to you know, miss the biggest discovery in the history of mankind. I mean, this thing is nothing more than a lead mine. 
but lead isn't very sexy and gold is. And if it's a secret gold mine, so sorry, I probably digressed too far, but this is part of my industry that I'm not that proud of. Uh, I'm not saying I get it right 100% of the time. I will say, look in the camera, I've found more junior mine, more, more junior speculations that became mines than anybody else in the business. That's how serious I am. And I'm not a geologist. How does that happen? So obviously we do good research and it's not just me. I have two analysts that work with me and, you know, I got a staff I pay every month. But the point being is I am passionate still about what I do. And this one is uh, quite a fine. I mean, some of our mastermind folks got in on this company at uh, 25 cents and it's been up as high as 210. It's in the about the buck 50 range right now. I do believe it'll be a buyout candidate as things progress over the next couple of years, but it'll probably be bought out far higher than the dollar fifty it's trading at right now. People again want to plug into your work. Where can they find you, David? The best thing is just get on our free email list, which is go to the mortgagereport.com. Give us the first name and a primary email address. We'll get you on the free list. For those that are serious uh, investors in resources across the board, rare earth elements, lithium, cobalt, the energy metals, uh, Base metals, precious metals, obviously. Uh, there's a subscribe button on the main website. I just described morganport.com. Scroll down. You have two choices a premium service or a mastermind service, and you can get a subscription for 50 bucks a month. It's that cheap. We've been speaking with David Morgan, the silver guru. David, as always, we appreciate checking in with you here on Reluctant Preppers and just thank you for your guidance on some of these forward thinking ways and frankly, your insightful ways of looking at the, the phenomenon that can otherwise be quite quite daunting to people when they wonder which what's going on and what's happening next and you always help us to sort that out. Thank you for joining us on Reluctant Preppers. Dunnigan, thanks for having me again. Appreciate it. <laughs>